The Hoffman Show. We're on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app, and we are streaming live on YouTube at the Team 980. And joining us, uh, well, from his home in Los Angeles is uh, Clinton Yates. Uh, and, and Clinton, I thought I was going to see you this week, buddy. Why'd you, why, are you, why are you not here? Why I have you do a this lot, to me? I have a lot going on in the next couple weeks, and I figured that a two- to three-day bender in Vegas, even if football-related, probably wasn't good for business. And by business, I mean my body. How are you, yeah. sir? I'm good. I am good, despite the fact that I, I do not get to see you. I flew, I flew so many uh, percent of the way. Uh, that's okay. I will see you at some point soon. And yes. We're still friends. Uh, so we have much to talk about. There's a Super Bowl 58 game on Sunday and as has been immortalized in Hoffman show, our opener fame <laughs> halftime is always a topic. Uh, so yep. we'll get to that as Usher, by the way, drops a new album this morning. Good business decision there. I totally agree. I think that it's an interesting discussion about Usher because a lot of people like for whatever reason, like, well, Usher's not hot right now. Usher is not even the it guy. Like for a long Usher's time. Usher. Right. Exactly. A long time. Super Bowl acts were just popular people, whether they were legacy acts, which Usher is at this point. New album aside, he's done right there in the city you're in right now. A residency for some time. Usher, to a lot of folks who don't understand this, is timeless music. That's the whole reason why he's so dope. The whole reason why you hear him at every wedding you go to. Usher is the truth. So I love this choice. I saw a rumor today that Justin Bieber might be joining him. I don't need that personally, but I like the idea of Usher being there, especially when it's in Vegas where he has made a second home in the last couple of years. No, he's a great choice because of the residency. Like you, There's obviously a couple of artists that have done so tremendously well that you could have chosen from, but he is distinctly on that list i do that was one of the things i was going to ask you is the guest appearance because he does like rihanna no guest appearance fine got that beyonce fine like in a different way like bruce springsteen legend like i feel like usher is like one micro step below that where like if you get the super bowl act you're clearly huge but there's Super Bowl acts that are probably going to have that guest, even like Coldplay, one of the biggest bands in the world. Like they had multiple guests. So who who do you would be like the, the Clinton Yates wish list on guests? I think Bieber would be pretty fantastic, obviously, a global pop star. Ludacris feels like an option for yeah. Sure. Like there's there's so many different great Alicia Keys for my boo. Like there's so many different potential options. Well, if he's going to do his actual duets in other songs with most people, which are, in fact, his most popular song, well, then all of those are on the table. I think that's a question from a playlist standpoint. Like, what's he going to do? Is he going to go back to, you know, old school stuff or is he going to play the hits, so to speak? If he plays the hits, I think the most likely person you see come out would probably be Ludacris because that's also I saw a theme the other day where a guy wrote, he said, oh, Usher's playing the Super Bowl. Yes. Yes. You know my favorite song, I'm a White Person. And, like, everybody knows <laughs> which track that is without right. having to even say it. So Luda is the most likely person, I think, to come out. But it is interesting. It also speaks to Usher's skills as an artist. His solo repertoire is solid enough to stand on its own, and he works well enough with other people to have mega hits with other mega stars that don't delete from who he is. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that's awesome or it would be interesting. Also, then they would immediately toss to the uh, ludicrous State Farm commercial because that's how Correct. that's how marketing works. Uh, so any uh, any particular uh, predictions on set list opener, closer, must have banger, et cetera? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, the, the truth is, I, th huh? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, like the thing is, is that at this point for me, Usher, just seeing Usher, it's not really about the playlist to me. I just feel that he's one of those guys in the music industry that when we look back in 50 years, we're going to say, wow, he gave us a lifetime. He gave us an entire body of work that literally has been since he was 14 years old. So I don't necessarily know that I have a favorite Usher song. I just I kind of want the auntie for family reunion moment where everybody says, look at Usher, baby. He came out there, right. this young man did it, and he can have his flowers while he's still not only with us, but able to move around and rock that stage too. That's more important to me than any particular song he plays. And make some money off him because he just dropped a new album. So Correct. You know, that's, exactly. that's the right way to go about it. All right, Clinton Yates, of course, ESPN. 
uh, with us. You can catch him on ESPN Daily, the podcast. Uh, you can catch him on ESPN Frequently. That was a play on words uh, on Around the Horn. <laughs> All right. Uh, now now time to go into the, uh, the the sporting event itself, the reason that yes. allegedly we are all here. Um, I, I don't know. It's been a weird week out here. You kind of get the vibe check of the week, right? I feel like a lot of people have been shifting towards Kansas City because of Mahomes. And then all of a sudden there's a little bit of a late week pushback towards San Francisco where folks are like, I don't know. They're really good, which, duh, they're in the Super Bowl. Where, where are you at on the game? I am in the camp of, and I said this on television yesterday, until proven otherwise, there's no sensible football reason to bet against Pat Mahomes. Now, there's a lot of people who don't necessarily care for the Chiefs. There's a lot of people who don't seem to think that what they do is sexy enough from an offense standpoint, particularly com- coming up against the 49ers, who have so many weapons, who do so many different things. You think to yourself, well, if I don't otherwise have a rooting interest, I'd probably like to see the football the 49ers play more than I would like to see whatever the Chiefs are doing, dinking and dunking, and oh, there's Kelsey again and opening the end zone. It has kind of a repetitive element to it that in fact reminds me a lot of the way that the Patriots used to play a quarterback who knows the system a can freestyle very well within that a bunch of no-name guys at your wideout positions you plug in a back or two here and there and the best tight end in the league and guess what here's another Super Bowl it is a little boring I get that but ultimately if I were a gambling man which I'm not that's a play on words for Vegas for you Craig I would be betting (laughs) on the Chiefs Until this changes, until that consistency ends, I don't see much reason to believe that it's going to be any different this week than it was any other week that had been in the Super Bowl or really in the playoffs since Pat Mahomes has been in the league. Right. And the thing about the wide receivers for the Chiefs that I think is interesting is it's not like like Belichick just didn't care. He's just like, ah, we'll figure it out. Get a, I don't know, like, be careful because Julian Edelman was walking around earlier, but like (laughs) they figured out with Julian Edelman, they figured out with Danny Amendola, they figured out with all these different guys that are completely unheralded. They were good at scouting specific skill sets uh, for what Brady wanted, that underneath quickness, um, and then the big tight end, obviously, with, with Gronk. But like the Chiefs in back-to-back years took receivers in the second round. Like Sky yeah. Moore hasn't worked out, but like he was a second-round pick. Rashi Rice has really come on. He's a second-round pick. Like They have invested there in an attempt to replace Tyreek Hill, which they made the correct business decision as great as Tyreek has been. Like You're not supposed to be able to lose the MVP of, or one of the uh, potential MVPs of the league and be this good, but like Mahomes is. And, you know, it, it Reed, I think the other thing that's important and it is actually a good parallel to New England too is for as great as the quarterback is, the coach is not afraid to run it sometimes. And like that's right. always in their back pocket. And, you know, we saw it in New England in certain games where they would just run the mess out of it. And in this playoffs, like Isaiah Pacheco has been one of the most important guys. I think one of the big parts about this, too, is that people fool themselves into thinking that sexy is better. And what we found a lot in football, at least in the last 10 years, is that, yeah, some of these boring teams are really good. You know, and that's just kind of how it goes. You talk about that dink and duck offense. You talk about what they do with guys like MVS. Yeah, they're not going to blow you away. They're not playing Madden football. You know what I mean? But, again, Patrick Mahomes as a leader is the kind of person that I just don't think it makes sense to bet against because, A, he's been there. B, he's won it. C, he's the better quarterback. Like, this doesn't need to have all of these mysterious X factors when it comes down to a lot of things. The give it to the good dudes offense often works best, and the Chiefs do that about as well as any. With that said, outside of the quarterback, the Niners have better dudes. Because sure. I think I think I heard uh, a stat that they're twenty and three in their last twenty three games when McCaffrey and Debo actually play. Uh, maybe it's Cap- McCaffrey, Debo, and Kittle. But like them dudes are healthy, and yeah. I, I do look at the the lull that the Niners had this year, which is pretty much the only time that they haven't looked like the best team in the league. Uh, obviously, Baltimore had something to say about that, but they're gone, um, and that that is when Debo was out, and I, that's the thing that I can't, I kind of can't get over is like offensively. Um, well, yes, the Chiefs defense has been fantastic. The Niners offense, when they have all their dudes, hasn't really been stopped this year, hasn't really been slowed down this year, maybe a half at a time like Detroit did. But it just shows you like Kyle figure it out. And I, to me, like Kyle and kind of where we see him by Sunday night is one of the fascinating elements of this game, because I feel like it could go anyway. Like if they have a big high profile coaching mistake, like that's going to that's a big thing on his resume all of a sudden of, of 28 to three and this, and you know, there's a couple of things that happened in that first Super Bowl that they played. And then if it's, if it's just Mahomes beats them, it's like he becomes Patrick Ewing uh, to, to Michael yeah. Jordan in the nineties. And if he wins, it's like, 
wow, he is the best coach in the league. He freaking beat Mahomes. Perhaps, but I do think that they're – he, as far as all of the people involved in this game, has the most to lose and gain from so-called legacy Twitter. You look at some of those guys that play on that San Francisco team, and they've already got – I think of George Kittle. I think of CMC. I think of even to some degree – Bosa, they've already got, and he's on the defensive side, obviously, but they've already got their personal legacies cemented. You're, nobody's going to look at them and say, oh, they didn't win a ring. They were bums, or they don't deserve to be in yeah, whatever. Those are Hall of whatever. Fame guys. Yes, those are Hall of Fame guys. Kyle Shanahan is not there yet. He's, I would argue, is to say not even particularly close yet because not just the fact that they've run into the Mahomes machine or Andy Reid, but because these have been at the hands of him that he has not been able to succeed. The 28-3 to thing ain't no all of a sudden, Gregory. That is a monster monkey on his back as far as I'm concerned. And in general, he's the kind of guy, too, that with all of those weapons that we just referred to on offense, he gets a little cute sometimes. I don't necessarily love the fact that he feels the need to show off his big, powerful play calling brain when oftentimes that doesn't necessarily require that isn't necessarily required to get what you want. Now, with Brock Purdy, it's a little bit of a different story. He doesn't have those options in the same way. And he has admittedly said he doesn't trust him in the same manner, even though he trusts him as much with what he does. Sticking to the game plan. Even if they get outside of it or down for a couple series here or there is vital to how the Niners win this. Yes, they've got better dudes, but can they figure out a way to put those pieces together to actually win a football game? That is always the hard part, and that's where Andy Reid strives and people like Kyle Shanahan, who, by the way, is in a similar position to what Andy Reid was, let's just say, four, five, six seasons ago, Bingo. and that's why it's so similar. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty fascinating. I do think Kyle has definitely, like, we've seen glimpses of it. He's got to prove it on this stage, which he haven't had a chance to since, you know, these, these two teams faced off four years ago. But yeah. it does feel like Kyle in big games has learned, but all it takes is one more to unlearn it and to go, <laughs> hey, man, like, the, is this the amount of pressure that's too much? Uh, Going to be pretty fascinating to watch on Sunday or perhaps listen to, again, Super Bowl 58 is right here on the Team 980. That is Clint Yates. We'll be talking about it. Uh, do you know what you're doing for ESPN Daily Monday morning after the game? We're doing a Super Bowl recap. My homeboy Jason Reed, I believe, is joining us for today's episode. For those of you who care about this storyline, we sat down and talked about Taylor Swift. Now, look, some of mm. you have a problem with this story. Some of you don't think that it's worth discussing on any level. I'm not one of those people. I want to thank Louisa Thomas, by the way, whose husband used to play for the Ravens. She joined us. She writes for The New Yorker. She wrote a story about this. And we just sort of looked at it from the standpoint of there's a sociological element here that is very real. And for all of the, for lack of a better term, pardon my French here, loser incels who have an issue with smart, attractive, rich, powerful, talented women being a part of what they enjoy, there's a real needle being pushed here in terms of what the NFL is really trying to be. Do you say we're going all in on this new generation of fans and, in fact, cater to that? Or do you say, no, here's how we do it. You better get your butt in some face paint and jump through a table or else you're not a real NFL fan. I do think whether or not Travis and Taylor work out, there are some new eyeballs on this that have forced the NFL to look at itself differently and say, what kind of league do we want to actually be? If Taylor Swift stands up and says, hey, guess what? I got a real problem with guys who are, I don't know, convicted of domestic assault or anything of that sort being in this league and says something open about it. You've got to take that seriously. And nothing like that has happened, never mind what all the kookster conspiracy theorists have said about how this could affect presidential elections, which is insane. But I do think there is something to be said for what is now the social responsibility of having a much bigger spotlight than just that of the sports world on you. And frankly, Gregory, I think that's good for the league and good for fans. No, I don't disagree with anything you just said. I can't wait to listen to that. That's going to go to the top of my queue for the plane ride back to D.C. tomorrow. Um, and I will also, since we're now on the Taylor train, uh, we had a great conversation at 5 o'clock yesterday with Nora Princiati, who has covered the NFL and covered Taylor Swift simultaneously sure. for the last four years about fandom and kind of some of those same intersections. So uh, if anybody is interested in that, definitely check out ESPN Daily and then uh, check out our interview with Nora in the Hoffman Show podcast feed. That's Clint Yates, everybody. Uh, hopefully I'll see you soon, my friend. In the words of the great Wesley Snipes in Passenger 57, always bet on black. See you later, Gregory. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.